Hello, today we're talking about the pros and cons of making Mount Sherman an early 14er for those who are new to 14er climbing. Hi there everyone, I'm Jason, and we're going through the pros and cons of making Mount Sherman an early or even a first 14er for you or for your kids. Mount Sherman was the first 14er we took our twin boys on when they were six years old. It was also the first 14er for my nephew when he was eight, and for my mother-in-law who was in her early 60s. So we've had some experience in our family hiking Mount Sherman as a first foray above 14,000 feet. But just because it's right for some people doesn't mean it's right for everyone. So we'll be talking about the pros and cons of the peak from the perspective of new climbers or even kids. I've climbed Mount Sherman from both sides. You can approach Mount Sherman from the southeast coming through Fairplay, Colorado. This route is called the Southwest Ridge. That may sound confusing because you gain the ridge that extends south and west from the summit, but you're hiking to it from the southeast. You can also approach Mount Sherman from the west, coming through Leadville, Colorado, and hiking from Iowa Gulch. This is called the West Slopes Route. The two routes actually meet at the saddle of the Southwest Ridge, so the differences are all in the approaches. To be honest, for people who are just getting into 14ers, I prefer coming from Fairplay. The Iowa Gulch side is a bit quieter, and the Iowa Gulch side is also shorter, but that also makes it steeper. We'll get into more specifics as I go through the climb coming from Fair Play and those pros and cons that I was mentioning earlier. First, the pros of the route. In comparison to other 14ers in mass, not just the Iowa Gulch option. The Mount Sherman Trailhead on the southeast side, that's the Four Mile Creek Trailhead, is a two and a half hour drive from Denver. It's also the same two and a half hours from Colorado Springs. I like that distance because it's short enough to not require a full day's drive in an overnight camp for many, many people, but it's far enough away from those major front range population centers to keep the crowds down. Don't get me wrong, you're still going to climb with a hundred of your closest friends on a weekend, but not several hundred. You can still find parking reasonably close to the trailhead, even at sunrise. The route finding is also simple. You follow the mining road into the basin and then head up the obvious and marked trail to the Southwest Ridge. So if you prefer to climb early or maybe you're climbing in the fall with less daylight hours, you can easily find your way even if you're under a headlamp. That's one less risk to have to contend with. Now for us geeky adults and maybe more importantly for the kid climbers, there are some mining ruins along the lower route which make for an interesting study and they're a good way to build up the anticipation level for any kids who are into that kind of thing. Also on the pro side is that it's a class 2 ridge. While there are certainly class 1 climbs that could make a nice 14 er cent, I think having a short and pretty tame piece of class 2 hiking is good preparation for future 14 ers There are only 7 peaks with class 1 routes on all of Colorado's 14 ers and there are 32 peaks with class 2 routes, by far the most of any class. So coming to terms with class 2 hiking is kind of essential if you want to keep doing this stuff. And as far as class 2 hiking is concerned, Sherman is pretty mellow. The class 2 section is short, offers just a tiny section of very mild exposure, again a good entry point to more exposed climbs on future peaks, and doesn't require unstable rock hopping like other class 2 talus fields. Speaking of exposure risk, 14er climbers also need to consider rockfall risk. While you can find routes, the class 1 routes that I mentioned earlier, that have less rockfall risk than this Sherman route, you can't really find a class 2 route with less rockfall risk than the Southwest Ridge. Even the Iowa Gulch side has a bit more rockfall risk than this. Really, the only place where it could be possible is the zigzag up to the saddle, but that section is pretty beat down and not particularly loose. And the biggest pro for me is the variable nature of the distance and vertical gain. You can kind of customize this climb to your needs. At its shortest, it's 5.25 miles round trip with about 2,100 feet of vertical gain. You can extend it all the way to 3,100 feet of gain in 10.5 miles. 
And that also gets me back to the steepness, which is pretty mild. A thousand vertical feet per mile is a good rule of thumb when you're thinking about steep or less steep Colorado 14ers. You take the round trip distance, you cut it in half. So in this case, 5.25 miles becomes two and five eighth miles one way. So you're doing about 2000 vertical feet in more than two miles or less than a thousand vertical feet per mile. You can take the Iowa Gulch side as another case study. It's 4.5 miles round trip. So two and a quarter miles at about 2200 vertical feet gain is much closer to the thousand vertical feet per mile. It's been my experience that the steep sections of a 14er climb is where new climbers really struggle. They haven't yet learned to modulate their pace as effectively as they will, and they tend to get winded and low on energy. The more that you can reduce this opportunity for these smiled mistakes, the more likely that new climbers are going to find their way all the way up to the summit. And besides, 5.25 miles isn't exactly a long hike by 14er standards. When you rule out routes that are class three and above, there are really only the Lincoln, Cameron, Bross, Democrat peaks, and that Iowa Gulch route on Sherman that are shorter and all of them are steeper. I think the Southwest Ridge finds that right balance between distance and steepness. So the easier terrain helps you maximize the likelihood for success. So those are the pros. Before we get into the cons, I wanna talk about one thing that's kind of a pro and a con. The road to Four Mile Creek Trailhead is passable by a patient driver in a two wheel drive vehicle on a dry summer day. So it's good that a two-wheel drive vehicle can make it up as far as you want to go, but it's also a bit of a con in that this isn't a groomed road. You need to avoid small boulders and a few potholes, so expect slow going. I think the only other major con would also be related to the drive, and while that drive time that I mentioned of two and a half hours keeps those population centers from all going to the peak at once, it's still two and a half hours, and that can make for an early rise. If you're planning, say, a 7 a.m. start time to leave from the trailhead up the peak, you could be waking up at 3.30 or 4 to make that schedule work. All things being balanced, like I said, we've chosen Mount Sherman for a number of first 14er climbs in our family, so it must be working for us. Hopefully this quick review helps you consider if it might make a good first or amongst the first few 14er attempts for you or maybe your kids. As with all things 14ers, there's always going to be varied opinions. So do you have a favorite peak that you like to recommend to those who are new to climbing these mountains? Let us know in the comments section. If you want additional thoughts related to this video and every video that we produce, along with links to the equipment we discussed, sample gear lists, sample itineraries, and links to other outdoor resources, please visit our website at shortguysbetaworks.com. The link's in the description below. And if you want to be alerted as we release new content, please subscribe and ring that bell. We produce educational content like this, as well as short films of our family adventures, and we release something new every week. So if you have ideas for content that you'd like to see, please let us know in the comments section too. See you next week and keep on getting more out of that big outside.